Good evening, Boulder. My name is Ron Burgundy. And tonight, we focus on an issue that has been concerning our country for years. The environment. Today, I have with us Shaylin Silverman. Hello, Shay. Hello. Is it possible for humans to make permanent changes to their lifestyle that will improve their relationship with the environment? Today, Shay Lynn will answer that question with some re research she did. Well, I was doing some research and discovered that paper towels are a significant contributor to deforestation, water pollution, and global warming. In fact, according to the Green Seals Choose Green report, 40% of trash in U.S. landfills consists of paper products and 30% of the timber consumed in the U.S. is used to make paper products. So this semester I eliminated my use of paper towels so anytime I wash my hands for any reason I let them air dry. I knew first off that you know even if this change didn't have a significant impact on the environment um, that it would force me to always be like consciously aware of my actions and how they infect, how they affect the environment and through this I thought my relationship with the environment would improve and it would possibly lead me to subconsciously make other changes to my lifestyle to help the environment and I knew that this would test my willpower and given that this is only a small change it would tell me whether I could make larger more significant changes to my lifestyle in the near future. So what I did over the course of the semester was the first three weeks I gathered baseline data and so basically what I did is I would wash my hands and I would use a paper towel and um, you know every time I would use one I would like record it and so over the course of the three weeks I tallied how many I used and the total came to 95 which yeah it's a lot um, but then over the next four weeks I stopped using paper towels completely so I would like wash my hands and um, and then I would just let them air dry and so I recorded how many times I washed them and didn't use a paper towel and it turns out that I saved 129 paper towels which was a lot so that's basically how I tracked my progress now answer this did you ever cheat no actually I was surprised because you know I don't really I'm not known for my willpower <laughs> and so I initially thought that I was definitely going to cheat and at first it was like awkward and uncomfortable to leave the bathroom with wet hands because then I'd kind of like walk outside in the snow and my hands would be cold but you know I think that was probably one of the biggest challenges I had to overcome because I definitely like had to really fight the urge to cheat mm -hmm. but I never actually once cheated so that wow. was a pretty big accomplishment. Oh, very nice. Very good. Yeah, because after, um, you know, after a while, I kind of got like accustomed to leaving the bathroom right. with wet hands. And so, you know, after a while, I stopped noticing and I realized I don't really even need paper towels, you know? It's just like a convenience in my lifestyle, but, An you know. Unnecessary convenience. Exactly. And it was just kind of like, you know, contributing to a negative impact on the environment. Mm -hmm. And it was something I could definitely do without. Exactly. Thank you. So our course is looking at this environmental ethics book and I was going through the book and I kind of, um, some ideas really stood out to me um, that philosophers had proposed that related to my project. And one that really stood out to me was Garrett Hardin's Tragedy of the Commons. Um, I think this paper towel issue really relates to that because every person who uses paper towels will grab like two or three at a time when they really don't need even one. But they'll just grab a stack and dry their hands and throw them away right away and so they kind of don't think about like sustaining it and if everybody is using, you know, two or three paper towels then quickly the like pool of common paper towels gets depleted really rapidly because, you know, the paper towels are a commons that we all share. They're in, like, public bathrooms and everything, and if, you know, everybody thinks that they can just take as many as they need, then it's, like, in our own inherent tragedy that it's going to run out really soon. 
or another idea was that Baxter proposed that regulating pollution um, has a cost because it's like you have, it's like a trade-off between um, between other things you can invest in and regulating the pollution. And so he was kind of proposing that pollution is a good thing and that we shouldn't really enforce all these rules and be really strict on regulating it because it's just like gonna detract from other time and effort we can spend um, in other areas like developing medicine and stuff. But you know in this in this way like not using paper towels it really isn't a trade-off because I mean this kind of goes along with the cost-benefit analysis um, you know, not using a paper towel really is not like a significant cost. Like the basically the the negative cost of polluting and cutting down trees far outweighs the small benefit of just having a convenient dry hand after you like wash your hands. And so it is not like cost benefit analysis does not justify using paper towels and neither does polluting for the sake of, or at least not regulating pollution for the sake of focusing on other areas. And I think lastly, like one topic that I was looking at was um, Schweikart's um, idea of is sustainable capitalism an oxymoron? And I think definitely in this case, it is an oxymoron because there are a finite number of trees in this world and so making paper towels is not a process that we can that can be sustained forever neither is like building homes or anything we cut down trees for it can't be sustained forever and so by that capitalism can't be sustained forever and so I think I definitely agree with Schweikart that sustainable capitalism is not not possible it's definitely an oxymoron and so these are just some ideas that I was like gathering from the textbook um, and I kind of was like thinking about how they relate to my project so I guess the real question is what impact did you really have on the environment right so I was looking into this process of making paper towels in order to compute this data basically softwood trees like pine and spruce are debarked and the pulp wood is shredded into chips that are cooked to remove the natural glue holding the fibers together. The pulp is purified with water and other chemicals and often bleached with chlorine to make it absorbent and white, which releases extremely harmful carcinogens and mutagens into the environment. The chemicals are rinsed out with water and the pulp goes through a high speed paper machine. And then resin, which is a translucent substance, is added to the mixture to strengthen the paper when it's wet. The water is removed and sheets of paper towels are joined together into a two ply sheet that's embossed to increase absorbance. And according to the Paperless Project, each day about 51,000 trees are required to replace the number of paper towels discarded. 17 trees yield one ton of paper towels, which gives around 2,040,000 sheets of paper. So in the first three weeks of my project, I used 95 paper towels, right? So there are approximately 15,000 sheets of paper that can be produced from a single tree and I used about 0.005% of a tree and um, over the next four weeks I didn't use 129 sheets of paper towels and so I saved 0.006% of a tree. So I'm walking into the bathroom of my sorority and uh, something I've noticed is that there's like definitely a huge um, problem with like paper towels um, they're just this is like the primary source that we use to dry our hands and after doing this project I I'm realizing like how unnecessary they are we really don't need to have this stack of paper towels it's just like problematic because you know you you reach for one and if your hand is wet it makes half of them wet and so people are less likely to want to use them and 
they'll throw more away or they'll grab multiple at a time and it's just like such a waste and we just really don't need it and so after doing this project I kind of like started thinking about ways that in my own sorority house I can change and make things a little more like environmentally friendly. Did you have any impact aside from saving trees? Yes, to make one ton of paper towels, 20,000 gallons of water are polluted in rinsing the ink out of the pulp and through the use of chemicals to purify the bleach and pulp. Because there are 2,040,000 sheets of paper in a ton, using 95 paper towels used 1.26 gallons of water, and then not using 129 paper towels saved 1.26 gallons of water. Eliminating paper towel use also prevented the harmful carcinogens from being emitted into the environment during the bleaching process. That sounds incredible, but does that data really represent the impact you had on the environment? Unfortunately, these were just my theoretical calculations, and I think that was one of the biggest challenges was that, you know, it didn't really bring about a real effect on the environment because the paper towels I didn't use were just used by someone else, and so it was hard to motivate myself to continue. This was like probably the biggest challenge because I like didn't really feel like I was producing a legitimate effect on the environment. Wow, it sounds like this project was not worth your time. Is that what you're telling me? Based on this data, would you advise others to make this change to their lifestyle? No, actually the opposite. According to statistics from the Paperless Project, more than 13 billion pounds of paper towels are used each year, creating 3,000 tons of paper towel waste. That's a lot. If every household in the U.S. used three less rolls per year, it would save 120,000 tons of waste and $4. million dollars in landfill dumping fees. For me personally, based on the amount of paper towels I avoided using in the four week period, I would save 1,677 paper towels per year. One of the largest problems with today's bathroom or paper towel use is that they're just one time products. So you just, you know, tear a sheet off, use it and throw it away. And it is, it's such an inefficient, wasteful process. And so it's something that definitely like people can do without, but it's one of those things that you know, everyone's accustomed to using paper towels, that's pretty much the norm. It's kind of like using public bathrooms, you know, if we eliminated those and just dug holes in the ground, would people adopt it? Probably not. I mean, I probably would have a hard time adopting it, no matter how beneficial I knew it would be for the environment. And so I think one of the ways that we can get people to start, like, eliminating their use of paper towels is first by spreading the word and, you know, starting the conversation. We need to really, like, like let people know what impact paper towels are having on the environment. And I know that people will start to think about, like, their everyday use of it, and they'll start to realize, like, paper towels are not really a necessity. And, you know, with the amount of neg negative effect that they're having on the environment, it's not really worth the small benefits that they're getting from it. And so first we, after like spreading the word about, um, I guess just like making people aware about how, um, how like horrible they are for the environment, then um, gradually like people will stop using them and it'll become the new norm and manufacturers won't, um, they won't need to produce as many because there'll be a lower demand and so I think in that sense like legislation doesn't need to explicitly change because like we as consumers can change it just through our actions. Consumers are so so powerful in the market field and I think people just like aren't aware like consumers just aren't really aware of the power they have and so definitely by collectively stopping our use of paper towels um, that'll probably lead manufacturers to stop producing paper towels overall that's hopefully the ultimate goal and it might take a while for you know people to adopt this change and stop using paper towels it might be like an awkward process kind of like what I experienced but 
I think overall gradually as, you know, people become more aware of how negative they are and stop using it, it will become the new norm. And people in this generation really are open to environmental change and conservation and people, I know if people are like fully aware of what paper towels are doing to the environment, then they will be, or at least a large portion of the population will be open to making this change. What about those who cannot completely give up paper towels? Are there other options? Yes, according to the Green Seals Choose Green report, people can still reduce their impact in other ways. If people use 100% recycled paper, such as EcoSoft Green Seal bathroom tissue, which also includes a chlorine-free manufacturing process, which is very good, there is a large positive effect on the environment. Every ton of 100% recycled paper saves an estimate 7,000 gallons of water and 60 pounds of air pollutants. If all paper towels were made with this recycled material, approximately 1 million tons of used paper would be kept out of our waste stream and 3.5 tons of wood would be saved for every ton of bathroom tissue produced. So one thing that I learned from doing this project is that it's definitely hard to stay motivated when I'm not really perceiving any real effects um, that my actions are having on the environment. But with that said, I realize the importance of every individual contributing because, you know, it's not just about one individual making a difference. It's about all individuals coming together to make a collective difference and, like, a change together because change can only really transpire if everybody is contributing. And I think this pretty much, like, applies to all... Um, like this mentality applies to all environmental practices. Um, everybody needs to contribute in order for change to transpire. And um, I guess like one thing that I realized is that we often take our environment for granted and we just tend to exploit it for things we need like paper and or things at least things we think we need. And we often forget the intrinsic value that we attribute to the environment, which is, like, so real and so necessary to keep because we rely on the environment. We coexist with it, and we need it to survive. And just destroying it like we're doing for things that we don't even need, like paper towels, is completely unnecessary, and it's horrible. We we share the like world with you know with animals and with trees and at this rate cutting down 19 million trees a year to make drying our hands a little more convenient is not okay at all in no way is it moral and we need to start valuing trees beyond just their usefulness to us so now that your project is over do you think you will stop using paper towels well I definitely don't think I'll use paper towels anymore now that I fully understand their negative impact on the environment. And, you know, this project also kind of made me aware of my other actions that impact the environment, such as driving my car. And so I definitely plan to start walking and biking more, maybe even carpooling, because, you know, this like opened me up to all the environmental effects that I have. I kind of like perceive it every day now with everything I do. Well, Shaylin, thank you so much for all of your delightful insight. I think that's all we have time for tonight, though. You have been such an inspiration to me, and you have made me think about how I can change my lifestyle to better the environment. Thank you. Well, good. I'm glad. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I'm Ron Burgundy. Just a blade